know the pit. I know the pit. Some of you might have never been in the pit, but are you probably there? You just didn't want to admit you were there. But I know the pit that God dug me from, and so I realize what it is to be brought from there to here because it was a long journey. It was a, it was a long journey for me to get here. But I'm here because of the goodness of God. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Are you glad for his salvation this morning? Amen. I'm going to take you to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to read a couple of verses for you there this morning, and I want to talk to you about knowing your adversary, because whether you realize it or not, you have an enemy, a real enemy of your soul. He's an adversary. He is out there to try to destroy you and to tear you down and to destroy every step that you have made progressively into the kingdom of God. It is the devil's job to turn your back from wherever you've come. Now, you may not have come as far on the journey as someone else, but at least you're in the journey. And to be in the journey means a lot. Amen. One songwriter said, I'm too far upon my journey, friends, to ever think of turning back into this world of sin. Now, you may have only taken a few steps out of the world out there, and you may not have come as far as you desire or wish to come. But I'm here to tell you that wherever you've come to is a step of progress, and you have stepped into a development that God is bringing you into, that great things, great things are immediately ahead for the people of God. Our world is in trouble, and whenever we see the situations that's going on in the world, it lets me know this, that we are closer to the great outpouring of the Spirit of the last day. See, there's a, there's a, a climate in the Bible that describes perilous times that will come, dangerous, troubling times. But he said, in the middle of that, I'm going to start a great outpouring of a latter rain that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what I'm waiting for right now, is a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And I believe that we're beginning to step right in to the edge of that great outpouring of the latter day move of God. I'm here to tell you that I preach a lot against religion. I'm not a religionist. I, I, I'm not into this thing of join the church and take you to heaven because I don't think you can join the church and get there. You can get in every Bible study that's offered in the church and you can't get there. You're going to have to have a transference of heart. It's going to have to be the old heart has got to go and a new heart's got to come. You've got to have a new relationship with God. Amen. If you believe that, give God praise in the house this morning. Amen. Now, I know most of us believe that. We are in the battle and the struggle of our life in our relationship with God. And we are in the battle and a struggle in the world. I'm, I'm not going through this just in the church and the world is just drifting along with everything going well. They're fighting the same battles we're fighting. The only difference is they have no one to help them, and we've got a God that said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll walk with you all the way, even unto the end of the age. And so there's where the difference comes. The difference comes is, is that I never have to stand alone. I am always with my companion. Jesus is always there. Sometimes my wife may not be able to be there. My children may not be there. My grandchildren may not be there. But I'm telling you that wherever I go, Jesus is going to be there. Amen. And so I want that born again experience from him. Now, Paul or Peter is writing unto us in his epistle. And he is saying to us, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary... Now, I want you to notice this. This is not the adversary for the gentleman sitting in front of you 
or set him beside you or set him behind you. He is your own adversary. You have adversity fighting against you this morning. There is an adversary that is attempting to bring you down to keep you from being all that God wants you to be. Bringing you into trial, bringing you into temptation, bringing you into testing ground to try to keep you from being what God wants you to be. Because your adversary, the devil, everybody say the devil, <coughs> as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want you to hang on to those words. He is as a roaring lion. And he goes about seeking whom he may devour. Now notice verse 9 what he said. He said, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Now, I want you to listen to this believers and unbelievers as well. He says, I, there is a resistance that you've got to offer. And when you look up the word resistance, it means there is a battle involved. Amen. An old songwriter said, this is a battlefield, brother. It's not a recreation room. This is a battlefield. And we are on a battlefield. We are fighting uh, in, we're fighting for spiritual survival because the enemy wants us to throw up our hands and quit in our walk with God, but we are refusing to do that. I can't let up on truth. I can't let up on the Word of God. I can't compromise the Scripture, not in one iota, because God's Word is true when the heavens and the earth is passing away. Amen. i got to take a stand. Give God praise in the house this morning. Praise God. Now, he said, whom resist? Steadfast, talking about whom? He's talking about the devil. That roaring lion that is coming against you, you're going to have a battle with him. You're going to have a fight with him. You're going to have an attack for him. I am on the attack mode for the enemy. I'm against sin. I'm against false doctrine. I'm against false prophets. I'm against anything that is not the true word of God. I'm telling you, I've always had a love for the Scripture. And all of my life, I've had people that have been around my world that have said that you just need to let up a little bit. Let me tell you, you can't let up on truth because truth is the only thing that we've got that can set people free from the bondage of this world. they got to come to truth. Amen. <coughs> people say, well, I love God. But uh, I don't know why you got to be so fanatical about truth. Well, when I look at the Word of God, I find the word Jesus and truth as synonyms. They are tied so tightly together that you cannot separate them. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And so you can't love God any more than you love the truth. You know what's amazing is that people will listen to your preaching for years, reject it every time it comes, but never come to sit down to offer you the hope that they have. Amen. If you believe something different, you owe it to me to come and to try to let me hear what your truth is. I've got to come to the truth of God. Now, notice again, he said, whom resists? I've got to come willing to fight and to battle and to take an attack mode against the enemy that is out there. And I'm going to preach to you in a minute, but i got to lay a little foundation for you. He said, steadfast in the faith, which means in the faith of God, I've got to take a firm, persistent, uh, a dedicated stand for the Word of God. I've got to take the faith. The Bible said the faith that was once delivered unto the saints of God and I've got to take a stand for the faith of God, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He is saying to me, the very same conditions that you're fighting against and that you're suffering from and the burdens that you're under and the problems that you're having, your brethren in the world are having the same problems. The difference is, as I said earlier, you've got God on your side and God shows up to help you and to give you strength and to pick you up from the weaknesses of the trial that you are in. Now Jesus said, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31, speaking to the apostle Peter, 
God said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you and to sift you as wheat. Now, if I understand the consistency of God's word, it means this, that if Satan was after the apostle Peter, he's after you this morning. He's after every one of you. He'll do whatever he can to upset your faith, to upset you in your walk with God, to keep you from ever becoming what God wants you to become. We are in a war, and we need to know something about the enemy that we are fighting against. Amen. We're battling on major battlefronts. The Bible said we're battling on the battlefield of the world in 1 John 2, 15. And then he said we're battling against the battlefield of the flesh. And then he said we're battling on the battlefield against the devil. Amen. And I want to tell you of all the battlefields, the most forcible enemy that you will ever fight against is the devil. He is brutal. He is without care. He is cruel. He will do whatever he can to try to destroy you. Now, as a roaring lion, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this world, speaking about the devil, he, he thinks this world is his domain. He thinks he has control over all of the elements of this world. Now, let me begin to pull out a few scriptures in the Bible that talks about the lion. And then I'm going to get you somewhere. The Bible said in Proverbs 30, 30, a lion is the strongest among the beasts, and he turneth not away from any. The Bible is telling me here that the lion that roars against you will never turn away from you. He'll fight you. He'll stand against you. He'll come to war against you. He is that kind of an enemy today. The Bible said of him in Amos 3, verse 8, Will the lion roar when he hath no prey? No, because the lion is the strongest and most powerful beast in the field today. Let me take this. Let me share with you this morning. My friend, we are battling and you are struggling and our world is struggling because we are under satanic attack like never before. The Bible speaks of the last day and said when the spirit of the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord has to raise a standard against it. There's only one standard that can hold back the flood uh, of the enemy that's coming, and that's the truth of God. The only thing that can keep the devil off of your home is the truth of God. The only thing that can keep the devil from afflicting your family with sickness, depression, discouragement, and sin is for you to keep your family under the umbrella of the Word of God and not let them get away from that. It's your responsibility to lift them up and to share with them the Word of God every day that they live. Amen. And so churches today, a lot of churches are going through all kinds of turmoil, all kinds of problems, and it's not from the outside. It's from conditions that the enemy tries to raise up from the inside. Jealousy and envy and character assassination and backbiting and gossip. You know what that is? That's the roar of the lion that has come against the body of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you today that if you follow the steps of the lion, they'll lead you to places you do not want to go. If you follow his steps, they'll lead you into a hospital ward somewhere where you'll find some little child laying on a bed, and on a bed next to him is an aged man or an aging woman that are groaning through the processes of death or some child that is dying from cancer or leukemia, and there's no recovery going to happen to their life. Jesus didn't come to bring that sickness. It's the enemy that came to bring that sickness upon humanity. It is not God that has plagued us. It's the power of the adversary that has come to plague us. Come on, folks, are you in the building this morning? If so, give God a praise. Hallelujah. See, I've been visiting hospitals regularly for uh, about 50 years now. I've been going and praying with people and, and seeing people and talking to them about God. 
I've walked into hospital rooms where little children have just had accidents, where their legs have been severed away from their body. And I look at them laying there, and I know that there's absolutely nothing that I can do to help them that this has already happened, and I know that it's the work of the devil that comes to sever those legs away from their body. I've sat in hospital rooms with young fathers uh, that their consciousness, are, are they, they're comatose because of a brain hemorrhage uh, or because something that's happened and their little two and three year old kids are playing around the bed while the doctor is saying they're not gonna come out from this. They're not gonna recover. And I look at that child and I know that child needs its mama or it needs its daddy. And I know that it's the power of the enemy trying to break down the family and trying to break down the importance of moms and dads in the family. I've seen young mothers uh, when the doctor would walk in with a little child whose body was all wrapped and twisted and turned and deformed uh, and hand that, dis that uh, baby to its mother and see the tears flowing down its cheeks. And I know that what it was, uh, it was the power of the roar of the devil that came against the body of humanity. Let me tell you this morning, if there's ever a moment we need to turn great faith to God, it is today. I need Jesus more than I've ever needed Jesus before. I've seen them take little babies out of a room, take them in for testing and, and to run scans on them and to come back and let the parents know this baby has a mental disorientation that we're not sure how severe it is, but we'll have to go through testing to find out. I've seen the mothers and the fathers of believers uh, weep through that and cry through that uh, because they knew their child was going to be born with that kind of a handicap. I'm here to tell you, Satan has no regard for human life. He has no regard for any one of us, and he will sever our lives. He will destroy us, uh, every one of us, if possible. He has no regard for your children, no regard for the child to come. It is the enemy of our life that's out there. The Bible calls him. He is the adversary. He's opposed to you. Give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. I've sat in hospital rooms numerous times, numerous times when the doctor would say, sorry, your child is gone. And how hard it was to hear those words and to know that you're looking at a body that is still complete, but the breath has gone from it and the heartbeat is no longer in it and there's nothing that you can do to reverse it. Uh, parents have heard their children have decided to leave God and to follow after all kinds of sinful lifestyles. You follow the steps of the lion and they'll lead you into places like mental institutions. You see, the will of God is that we be of sound mind, not that we be in a mental institution somewhere. God did not ordain that. That is of the enemy. <coughs> I remember years ago going to the old Central State Hospital in Louisville and walking through the wards and looking at the people and seeing some of them sitting there, maybe screaming at every breath and talking to themselves things that made absolutely no sense, young and old alike. I saw some sitting in floors that could not get up without aid. Others tied to chairs who could not get up unless someone released them. I saw them strapped in beds and screaming and crying. What is it? The lion hath roared against the human race. It's come against us and it comes against believers and we need to raise a standard against it and say no to the enemy. I refuse to accept this. Hallelujah. See, the world is plagued today, plagued with drug abuse, plagued with pornography, plagued with alcoholism, all of these things. Why? Because the lion hath roared. I saw my brother go down a trail from the age of 14 with drug addictions uh, until finally an overdose at about the age of 56 uh, and never gave his life to God. And I know it was the enemy that destroyed him. 
follow his steps into the prison and look at hardened criminals, uh, sex offenders, uh, maniacs, uh, all kinds of people. And they weren't all raised bad. Many of them were raised with good, believing mothers and fathers, uh, but they went astray. What happened? The lion hath roared, and we didn't pay any attention to it. I saw Katie uh, Perry on the news one night being interviewed. And, of course, you know who she is. She's, she was once a gospel singer. Now she's a pop rock singer and calls herself an atheist. And some of you buy right into that and want to promote your children to be like, I don't want my children to be like that. I, I don't want that at all. I want them to know that there's a God worth following. Those things aren't worth following. And she's a pop uh, rock artist and she was raised in a Christian home. She was raised in the home of a, of a pastor and I, I saw her testify one or talking one night and a, a word was said about her father and immediately she defended her dad and she said I want you to know that my dad is a good man. My dad lives what he preaches. My dad believes what he preaches uh, but I happen not to believe that there is some old man sitting somewhere up on a big seat in the sky that's going to judge the world. I want to go on record to you this morning to tell you that every knee's going to bow, every eye's going to look upon him, every tongue's going to confess. Katy Perry will bow her knee with every other atheist in the world, and they're going to give an account to God. Saying you're an atheist is not an answer. Saying you're an agnostic is not the answer. You've got to believe in Jesus Christ, and you've got to be a follower of him. Hallelujah. See, the devil will take your child. The devil will take your little girl. He'll take your little boy. He'll set their minds into perversions. He'll set their minds in, in strayful, sinful ways, away from the ways of God. He's no respecter of person. He'll take anybody, and he especially loves to take those that have been raised and reared around the house of God. When we hear the lion roar, we as mortals are helpless against him. The lion is the king of the beast. We can't conquer him. He's too strong. He's too big. No beast of the field can conquer him. His speed and his strength and, and, his, and his power to fight is, is, is more than any other beast of the field. And if there is in the word of God that kind of a line that's roaring against us, we as mortals are all but helpless against him. And if there's ever a chance of destroying that line, he's got to meet someone at least as equal or better in order to bring him down. Come to the music. We've got to, he's got to meet somebody better or somebody stronger than himself in order to bring him down. I hear a story in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. It is a story of John looking at a book and he reads a story and there's a seal upon that book pastor he wants to know what does that book mean what does that book say talking about the book of revelation all of a sudden the angel comes to him and he says John there is no answer for you you cannot figure it out you cannot get the answer but John there is a lion there is a lion that is from the tribe of Judah when the devil tells you he's the master of the field you remind him there's another lion living in this field there's another lion that is here Hallelujah. There is a lion from the tribe of Judah. And I like these words. He hath prevailed. He hath prevailed. He hath prevailed. He is overcome. He has defeated all. He has brought down the powers of the enemy. The lion from the tribe of Judah. He hath prevailed. Oh, yes. And then the test comes. When the lion of the tribe of Judah meets the lion, the God of this world, they meet in Matthew chapter 4. And when the Bible said the temptation is over, the devil leaves him. He runs from him because the lion that roars against us as an adversary realizes he's met a lion bigger and stronger than himself. Oh, yes, stronger than himself. In the fifth chapter, Jesus walks into the book of Mark, meets a man among the tombs filled up with 
demons by the thousands, demons everywhere, demon forces. But when Jesus meets that demonic spirit, that unclean spirit that is in him, the Bible said the man comes and all of a sudden he tames him. And he puts chains on those ugly, nasty spirits that have him bound and delivers him. The man comes clothed and in a sound mind. I don't care what demonic force. I don't care what temptation. I don't care what kind of evil is tormenting you today. When you declare greater is the God that is in me than all the gods that's in this world, you're going to come out of there prevailing. He hath prevailed. Now came the ultimate battle of the lions, and it happened at Calvary. The lion of Judah was taken by the crowd and was beaten. He was disfamed. His reputation was destroyed, and he was spit upon. And Jesus was mocked, and they made a crown of mock and put it upon his head. And said, if you be the king of Jews, mocking his kingship, mocking his lionhood. Finally, Jesus is nailed to the cross and nailed to the cross. Suddenly the words flow from his mouth. It is finished. And he gives up the ghost. The devil thought that's the end. <laughs> the devil thought that is the end. Oh, but it wasn't the end because the lions still have to meet. <laughs> Praise God. You know what? The Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 18, that if the prince of this world, if the devil had had any idea who Jesus was, he would never have allowed him to be crucified. Oh, if he'd have just had any idea that this was him because he knew that if it was him, he was hopelessly and helplessly defeated. They placed Jesus in a tomb and in the caverns of hell, the demons of the underworld rejoiced. We defeated him. We killed him. We brought him down. We put him in the grave. We have victory and power over Jesus. But what they did not realize that before his death, John 2, 19, Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up again. Oh, hallelujah. And on the third day, there comes a sound, and it's a cracking of the seam that is on the mouth of the tomb. And all of a sudden, the seal begins to crack, and angels begin to rejoice. And Jesus walks out of the grave. He walks out of the grave. And when he walks out of the grave, he says these words, All power is in me, in heaven and in earth. He hath prevailed. He hath prevailed. He hath prevailed. He has brought down the kingdom of this world. He is alive, and he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Some of us. Glory. Oh, glory to God. As we stand together, I'm supposed to be given an altar call, but I feel like running. Oh, come on, Mama Sata. The altar's open. Come on, get Jesus, and the other will have to go. Come on. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh. Come on, anybody want to pray? My God. You want to pray this morning? Come. Oh, why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. 
My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Why should I worry about the highs and the lows? The ups and the downs. There's a special need here this morning that we're going to ask God to undertake for and to God to come into. Then we're going to anoint Betty. She is going to have back surgery on Tuesday. Oh, God. And my God is bigger than that. My God is bigger than that. Praise God. See, my God that walked into my body when I was laying on my deathbed, I mean just right at my end, right closing out with very little time, and God took cancer out of my body and healed me and gave me back strength. I don't preach like a dead man. I'm alive. Hallelujah. That God is a God that can face that lion that comes as an adversity and set you free here today. I want us to pray right now for this need. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 